So some of what you're going to see is similar to some of the things we've already seen, but I guess that's to be expected given the topic. So I wanted to start with the um, time series of drought in New Mexico, just a little history of drought in New Mexico since the start of the drought um, monitor map, which New Mexico is an arid, semi-arid state. We're um, familiar with drought. There we are at the very end of the scale in the, um, 2018 with some drought. It, it's hard to see, but there was a little tiny space last August where we didn't have any drought and everybody was so excited because nothing showed on the map for the first time since the map had, had um, evolved, but we're not in that situation anymore. So this is just a couple of uh, pictures of some reservoir levels and the fluctuations in New Mexico. So Santa Rosa Lake is on the Pecos River. It's maybe midway on the Pecos River in the state. It's on the eastern part of the state. And we go from 2005 when it was reasonably full to 2009 when there was less water to 2012 when there was mud. And then um, we'd had a couple good monsoon rains. 2013, much of the reservoirs on the Pecos got a lot of water and they were in great shape. And then 2014, the same thing happened. And then last year we had some good rains. So as far as the Pecos side and the reservoir storage, New Mexico was doing okay. I don't have any pictures of the Rio Grande side, but... Um, that is not the same rose. This isn't really a rosy picture, but that's not the same picture as it is here. Elephant Butte's been quite low for a very long time, and Elephant Butte's a major reservoir on the Rio Grande. So then a little history of New Mexico um, governor's executive orders. In New Mexico, the drought task force is activated through executive orders from the governor. And so since this 1996, we've had several governors. Um, every governor deals with things a little bit differently. We had the um, creation of the New Mexico Drought Task Force in 96. Then the um, 98, they did a drought plan review. 2002, uh, state of emergency due to drought conditions, and that's when they um, really came through and did the 2002 drought plan. I'm going to have a slide next that talks about that, volume one, volume two. Um, then we had 2003, the establishment of the New Mexico Drought Task Force again. The 2002 Drought Task Force, 2003 Drought Task Force had, I think, five members, and then as we progressed through time, then they had more members. It kind of varies depending upon the um, governor and the governor's executive orders. 2006, a state of drought. 2008, a disaster due to drought, again in 2009, and then the most recent one was 2012. We did have a drought declaration by Governor Martinez. So as I said, 2002, the New Mexico Drought Plan, Volume 1 and 2. Um, this has been really interesting going back through the research for this workshop because there were some of these documents that I hadn't ever seen before, so it was really useful. And the um, 2002 Drought Plan was fairly comprehensive. Um, subsequent updates, since then we've only as far as I am aware, have updated drought plans. And so 2003, there was a drought plan update, went through the um, conditions at the time, maybe some assessments of impacts. The same 2006, 2008 was similar. Um, 2013, as a result of the 2012 drought declaration, the drought task force was um, activated. And we did go through quite a bit of work to do a, an, an impact, <coughs> excuse me, impact assessment report that included, like I said, the assessment of the drought conditions at the time, 
actions various agencies were implementing in order to address conditions, um, things along that line. So the 2002 New Mexico drought plan um, said the, in the scope, it said that it, the statutory test was that it must be beyond local control and requires the state's resources. And we heard similar talks from a couple, or statements from a couple people this morning, addresses emergencies that cannot wait until the next legislative session, um, must comply with the anti-donation clause in the New Mexico Constitution. Um, and that deals with, I think, what can and can't be funded. And then it had segments handled according to federal and state resources. And it said the plan is dynamic and a work in progress, which I think would lead one to understand the updates that have happened, but maybe it needs to be updated again. The um, purpose of the plan was to protect natural resources and the economic base in New Mexico by minimizing vulnerability of drought. And the um, plan was to provide New Mexico with a framework for an integrated approach to minimize the impacts of drought. And it was intended to complement ongoing water resource planning efforts. The Drought Task Force acts as a liaison between the various work groups and the Office of the Governor. And in the 2002 plan, there were triggering mechanisms that governed the report of conditions to the Drought Task Force, and um, then the Drought Task Force would report to the Governor. I um, haven't seen that happen recently. So then through the updates, the 2003 um, Drought Task Force, they were work groups. The 2006 update, there were some work groups. There were some different um, assignments of work groups. 2006, we had a different governor. There was a, a lot of work done on climate change. The 2008 recommendations, a lot of that went towards infrastructure and um, funding. So. Drought test for work groups have been similar to what we've already heard discussed today. The um, drought monitoring work group, the um, infrastructure people, the agriculture people, the wildlife and wildfire, recreation, economic development. Um, to my note says, 2005, Governor Richardson formed a Climate Change Action Council and then there was a climate change advisory group and there was a report, there was a drought summit in 2006, but um, those are all in the past. So then recent drought plan activity, we did have the 2012 executive order from Governor Martinez. She issued a, an executive order on May 11th, 2012, which directed the continuation of the Drought Task Force for an additional two years, Drought Task Force meetings every quarter, directed the state engineer to appoint working groups and ordered a review of the New Mexico Drought Plan with revision as necessary based on assessment of current conditions, evaluation of drought impacts, and recommendations for appropriate response and mitigation actions. So at this time, the Drought Task Force is chaired by the state engineer, and I work for the state engineer, so that would be our involvement. And the Drought Task Force is, as was described earlier and by other people in New Mexico, also in New Mexico, it's a executive cabinet secretary level group. We had um, various subcommittees with the 2012 executive order when the Drought Task Force was um, activated. We had, um, in addition to some of the ones I talked about, the wildlife and the agriculture, we had some recoverable water that dealt with brackish water, produced water, gray water, wastewater. Um, we had a whole communications group with the various public information officers from various state agencies. 
innovation and economic development, um, agricultural water conservation and water transfers, watershed health and management. So now the drought management work group or drought monitoring work group, which is the one responsible for monitoring drought conditions, meets every month. And we have met every month all along. The only other active group at this time is the um, Watershed Health and Management Group. And they merged into an already existing forest and watershed management coordinating group. So that was a really good fit for them. So that group has continued to meet. But the other um, groups have been disbanded for now. We do have some state statutes that deal with drought, um, drought management plans. There's uh, mention of them in the statute that deals with the state water planning, and then some mention in statutes that deal with um, municipal water systems, county water systems, and municipal and county regulations and water suppliers. And those deal with drought plans, water conservation plans. So um, I, li I like this cartoon from the drought mitigation centers. So I threw this in. Um, it seems to be evident that there, you know, there's a lot of different parts to drought planning. So we have to figure out what, what are we in the panic situation or just concern or happy because it rained. Um, the state engineer this year, looking at the drought information that was available, realized that drought was a, <coughs> excuse me, serious concern and wanted to be proactive. And so one of the things that we did was we spent quite a bit of time developing a drought website. And we looked at Arizona because Arizona was fantastic. We got a lot of ideas from that. And we also looked at other states, which I don't remember all of them right now, but we did quite a bit of research. And we do have that um, drought information available on the um, Office of the State Engineers website. So some of the ways that we deal with drought at this time is through um, some of the, t the topics that are here on the slide, and I'm going to talk about each of them a little bit more detailed. This information was taken from the um, current draft of the state water plan. So New Mexico's in the process of updating the state water plan. I think it comes out this year. And these are some of the topics that have come up through public meetings that they've had through incorporation with all the different planning regions in the in the state. And these are some ways that we are dealing with or addressing drought conditions at this time. So active water resource management is a big topic in, in New Mexico refers to a broad range of activities, including permitting transfers, monitoring and metering diversions, and limiting diversion of water to the amount authorized by existing water rights. New Mexico is a prior appropriation state, so first people to get there get the first water rights. Um, a lot of what we've done through this active water resource management process is working with um, irrigation districts or working with, we have a lot of acequias in, in New Mexico, so small, small ditch associations, and working with them on shortage sharing. Like maybe the supply's not there, so everybody's gonna take a 40% cut. Or maybe we're gonna do rotation. And so three days a week, this five ditches get water and the other four days of the week, these six ditches get water. And so there's a lot of work through state engineer staff. They have water masters. They go out. They go around the, the, the basin. We have put in a lot of um, metering 
and um, measuring devices. We have water banking available in some areas. People do water banking so that maybe there's just not enough water this year and so I'm gonna fallow my field, but it's not, because I put it in the water bank, it's not gonna count as not using the water. New Mexico, we practice um, conjunctive management of groundwater and surface water where appropriate. And the municipalities do this. Of the, My example is Santa Fe and Albuquerque. They're both um, on the Rio Grande River. They both have surface water diversions and groundwater diversions that they can use for their municipal water. Um, the goal is to meet compact compliance because we have a lot of, we're not like, what was it, Colorado, where they ship all their water out. We, we have water that just has to go through. <laughs> Got to make sure enough water goes through. Um, so we have a couple of um, projects around the state where they're, at, they're actually diverting surface water, but then when there's no surface water, then they're using their, their groundwater, and so we're managing those, that resource that way. Another way that we're dealing with possible um, water shortages is aquifer storage and recovery, and these pictures are from the um, Albuquerque Bernalillo Water Utility Authority. <laughs> I don't have it written down, so I have to depend on my memory. And um, they have some aquifer storage and recovery projects. Also, Rio Rancho has some aquifer storage and uh, recovery projects. Rio Rancho is a city outside of, um, just north of Albuquerque. And so they're putting water back into the aquifer in the with the idea that when they need to withdraw it, it's in the ground. Um, irrigation efficiency improvements was mentioned in the state, state water plan. An example of this is um, the work that was done, the Middle Rio Grande Conservancy District on the Rio Grande put in a lot of um, gauging stations and gate operations, they put in a whole SCADA system, and they reduced their diversions. Um, it was, I don't have a percentage, but that's a way that um, they're leaving, you know, more water in the river for the, who was I talking to about the silvery minnow, the endangered species. New Mexico has a brackish groundwater national desalination research facility. So that's another option is desalination for um, drought, you know, balancing of water. And then we're also doing quite a bit of work on um, produced water. We have a thriving oil and gas industry in our state and Oil and gas wells produce a lot of water that has to be dealt with and people are doing research into how we might be able to use the produced water and reduce the demand on our, on our fresh water supplies. We also have at the Office of the State Engineer, we have a fairly extensive outreach program for the public, for um, Anybody who's interested in the state, they send us an email with an order form and we ship off materials to them. The brochure in the middle on the bottom, the Don't Waste a Drop, we just um, updated that. It had been last published in 2002. So we updated that. It gives you some pretty valuable information on how to fix normal, okay, not normal. We're hoping they're not normal. Unexpected, no just how to fix your household leaks. So that's a pretty good, pretty good brochure that we had there. So I just wanted to discuss a little bit. I did look at the Arizona, Colorado, and Utah plans because to be totally honest, I hadn't really looked at them very much before. 
And I was impressed with the similarities. I Maybe all drought plans have a lot of similarities based on Cody's discussion. I think that there probably is a, an element of, of com comparability between them, but then states are individual and everybody does things differently. Um, so that's really interesting. That was really interesting to me. I'm gonna be able, I hope, to go back to New Mexico, where we're talking about, in New Mexico, we're actually talking about updating our um, drought plan, and there's gonna be a lot of useful information from here. So I'm really pleased that this um, opportunity came up. So, as far as the current drought, there's a possibility of an executive order for a drought declaration. Um, also, the state is currently, as I just said, exploring the preparation of a drought management plan. I mean, this is all recent emails that I've seen, so I don't know what the time frame is gonna be. The um, governor's leaving we have an election in November, so there was somebody that talked about a state that was in a similar position where their governor wanted the plan or some plan before they left, and we might be in that situation, I'm not sure. Um, the plan, the, the proposal that I saw about a new uh, a drought management plan would be some coordination, coordinated drought monitoring, response to emergency drought, problems, mitigation of long-term drought impacts, and building of community adaptive capacity to drought. So I think that um, there's a lot from this workshop that I could take back to this process and it would be useful. I don't know that I've given Utah any ideas, but it's been really helpful to me. So for conclusions, I guess I go back to the drought planning means different things to different people. I think something that we struggle with in New Mexico is it's raining, so the drought's done and we're good. And we just, our monsoon season just started, but where I live in New Mexico has only gotten, my husband sent me a text this morning, we got two tenths of an inch. And I'm like, wow, we haven't had any rain for months. However, if you look at Santa Fe, which is, 20 miles away, they've gotten a couple inches some places in Santa Fe. So you've got to really keep an eye on people. They get all excited and it's, look, it flooded, so we're good. And it's hard to keep people a little bit more grounded in things. I mean, drought's a cycle. It happens. New Mexico is terribly dependent on snowpack. This year was pathetic. If we have a good monsoon season, that's certainly helpful, but it's not gonna fill our reservoirs unless maybe you're on the Pecos and you get a big rainstorm and then you're good. Um, I think that what I've learned so far is that New Mexico maybe could work a little better on some communicating with um, people around the state so that the drought, um, conditions are more understandable, which I'm hoping that we're doing with our website. Um, feel free to look at it. I did not put it on my slide, but um, it's on the Office of the State Engineer page. And I think that it seems to me Utah is on a great track. I've appreciated learning about Colorado and, and Arizona and um, I think everybody's putting so much effort into this that it has to be a great workshop and a great move forward. So that's my discussion. Thank you. <laughs>